if you look if you look today uh, basically the industry is suffering from multiple things so spends are going down price transparency with e-commerce has come up a lot um, the variety of shops is lower as you can get out there um, how do you see an airport in the future when you compare it with omnichannel platforms like um, Alibaba or eBay's of the world what can an airport do to come closer and have a more integrated customer experience so I think when, when people think about e-commerce at an airport people don't get it right away because they think you know why should people buy on an online uh, website of the airport rather than just go to Amazon but the reality is that Amazon and Alibaba are not universally um, accessible for everyone in the world exactly. um, you know I live in Germany um, and and I can order almost anything at Amazon and have it shipped the same day or the next day but that's not the reality for a lot of people around the world a lot of people don't have that accessibility however um, when you're looking at what are the real cost drivers of e-commerce, um, it, it is a wrong perception that e-commerce is very profitable. E-commerce is a volume game. And, and the two biggest cost drivers in e-commerce are A, traffic acquisition, and B, returns. Those two things uh, create most of the costs for any large e-commerce retailer. Now, if you're looking at an e-commerce space, the traffic comes for free at an airport. Of course. And returns can be reduced to almost zero because you're picking the goods up if you're not doing home delivery. You can then have a chance to return it and there's almost zero return shipping costs if you're doing e-commerce in an airport. So really the two highest cost drivers of e-commerce can be completely neglected at an airport which, which gives you a major advantage towards the e-commerce the e players of the world if you're looking at it uh, from that perspective. And the third uh, part is that an airport, especially when the airport collaborates with the airline, you actually have access to very valuable data about your passengers. And through loyalty schemes, you can build a, a footprint of these passengers and then actually do personalized selling to them. For an Amazon and an Alibaba to do personalized selling, they first have to collect a lot of data from anonymous people and then build their profiles, which they can over time. But an airport gets a lot of this data potentially in advance with the right collaborations. Okay, because this is exactly the point. I mean, we all know that the industry or the airport industry is one of the data richest industries. Yet, it seems that they fail to consolidate this data. Where do you, where do you believe the problem is um, when it comes to the collaboration? Because you've got the operator, you've got the retailer, um, you've got the airport. Yet, because they own so much data, but they don't know how to populate it and to make it available in a useful way that they can really customize messages to the customer. What is the main reason for that, you think? Well, <clears throat> I, th I think working with a lot of data is um, something that takes work and, and it's, it's not something that just happens automatically. Um, and, and a lot of airports are not using the data to the maximum uh, possible ways they can do. And, and typically in the past, most of the data has been used for operational planning and, and to some extent to, to plan builds out, build outs of retail. Um, but with the possibilities that you now have through, uh, through re real time data and actually tracking passengers movement through the airport and tracking their purchase behavior digitally, et cetera, et cetera, you are getting to a level of data where the airport doesn't necessarily need to make decisions based on data manually. For example, say uh, most of the high spenders are walking through the uh, A uh, terminals, uh, you know, or gate, gate 45 or whatever, but and, and then put a retail store there that capitalizes on that. Through the possibilities of automation of data, you can now simply pick the right products, the right offering, the right services that you want to sell to each passenger rather than doing what, what we call segmentation in exactly. the e-commerce industry, you can actually do real personalization. Be because this is, I mean, this, this is a stunning fact as a closure uh, that if you look at what Alibaba does on Singles Day, which is roughly 19 billion, uh, it basically is done with a couple of hundred million clients. 
Um, if you look at our entire industry, I think 2016 was something like three, 63 and a half billion dollars. It's basically three days of Singles Day. Yet we have four billion travelers. How? What do you believe that if? Let's assume that the industry, or hypothetically, the industry embraces all the tools that are available, all the data. What would your thoughts be on how big could this industry be? Because we have four billion travelers and it is it is bound to double. So if you just take a mathematical approach, um, the industry has to grow a lot. But how would this look like if it's fully, there's this fully integrated uh, digital journey? Well, what I can say is that there is a significant reason why Alibaba and Amazon are trying to get into the aviation space. Um, they do want to get, and Google as well, they do want to get to those customers that are flying, um, that are typically the top end of the, of, the, of the value chain when it comes to shoppers, that are typically digitally connected and that are typically um, you know, international uh, people. Um, so, so there is a very large interest to get into that. However, uh, I would caution any airport to let them in mm. because um, the, for the airport it is very, very important that they own the data, that they control the environment. Um, once they hand that over to an external party, then they simply become a delivery mechanism for a much bigger player that can control them rather than the other way around. Um, so, of course, Amazon could simply put uh, lockers and collection, uh, uh, you know, lockers into the airports and uh, a lot of passengers would probably use that, but it would completely cannibalize the entire travel retail for the airports and the travel retailers. So rather than, than um, you know, tr not offering anything and, and trying to avoid it, um, the, the goal should be to provide something that's equally as compelling but as the travel retail community and not as, uh, you know, joining one of the big giants that are already eating everything. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.